Hi, I'm Joe Gertis, and this is Coffee in the Capital. Today, our guest is Representative Clint Allett, representing the 68th House Legislative District, representing uh, Tioga County and parts of Bradford and Potter County, uh, and a lot of townships uh, in, in your current district, Representative. And I, I see you actually uh, in the new uh, redistricting, you're going to actually pick up a few more townships. So we're happy about that as well. But sir, thank you very much for taking the time to join us on Coffee in the Capital. Thanks for having me. Uh, Representative, today we wanted to talk a little bit about uh, a, p- a package of bills that, that's actually currently in the House, uh, uh, kind of headlined by uh, your your uh, House Bill 2404, and it, it's broadly being talked about as the, the maintaining cre- creeks and streams uh, uh, package of bills, and, and just thought we could talk about that a little bit, and if you could explain kind of the impetus behind the bills and and, and where we're trying to go and why we why we need to get there quickly. Yeah, we couldn't come up with any like real clever name. We tried several <laughs> times. Uh, sorry, uh, those that are watching. Maybe maybe something will come. I don't know. But um, really, the this happened um, really from what I hear from my constituents um, sure. in my district here and from my township supervisors uh, who who see the lack of maintenance, proper maintenance, meaningful maintenance. Um, it's really happening all across the Commonwealth. Um, specifically here in my district, I hear about it all the time. Um, there's not a week that goes by that I don't hear from at least probably six or seven people that call our office with this concern. So we are uh, we, we, we had a hearing uh, up here in Tioga County uh, back in December. Uh, we had several floods this past year and, and multiple years before uh, high volume rain events that um, that really challenged a lot of our communities. And specifically, we had one bridge that uh, ended up in the creek. Um, this was a right. county owned right. bridge and we had pictures of that. and. Uh, we actually took during that hearing that we had here with the policy committee we actually took a bus um we had township supervisors that were there we had um, dep was there conservation we had fish and boat on the bus we had probably a dozen legislators that that made the trip and we took them out there and there's nothing better than than putting your boots on right and going out there and seeing the issues firsthand so we did that we had a great meeting and this package of bills was really born out of that hearing that we had right here in Tyler County. As we like to say, our townships are, are great stewards of the environment, but we also have to protect the assets uh, of, of our townships and of our counties um, and of the, and property, uh, personal property and business property of our residents. Nobody knows their community better than our township supervisors. I mean, they've taken oaths to, to, to be there to help protect them. And sure. so what we're looking to do through this package is say, hey, these folks care and let's do what we can to empower them, give them a little more ownership, take off some of these regulations that have made it incredibly difficult for them to do the job that they wanted. We're, we're trying to do that with this package. I think that we're going to get a lot of support from it because it's not a Republican mm-hmm. issue. It's not a Democrat issue. This is an issue that's all across the Commonwealth. And as I talked to my colleagues, they're welcoming um, this legislation and the, the meaningful change that it potentially could bring uh, to their community. Well, we look forward to working with you on this uh, as, as we as we finish the, 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 the last few months of the 21-22 legislative session. And Representative, you just mentioned uh, the natural disaster that took down a bridge uh, in your district. Um, you also have a House resolution, House Resolution 179, that's out there that asked the federal government and FEMA uh, to take a look at the total population uh, that a disaster hits and not just uh, stopping it at political boundaries. Uh, can you talk about that a little bit more? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we do thank the federal government for the work that they do. And sure. after a uh, major flooding event, it's it's critical that we, you know, break down any barriers that are in the way to get the to get the resources to our community. However, one of the barriers that we did find um, after the flood that we had here in August was um, really the, the the per capita piece to this. And also the fact that, you know, this storm specifically went across the, the New York Pennsylvania line. And what ended up happening was if if we could have combined our numbers in Pennsylvania with New York State, right. I mean, the storm doesn't know where the line is, right. uh, but if we could have combined these numbers, we likely could have been eligible for more uh, support from the federal government and ultimately to our constituents who, who drastically needed it. Um, but because of um, really the, the federal government considering 
um, each state independent right. is a problem. So we're asking them to please look at the per capita, please not allow a, a, a state line to be a barrier when it comes to a specific storm and relief from the federal government. Just like I said, the storm doesn't know where the state line is. Um, so neither should the federal government when it comes to support for these types of incidents um, and, and major life impacting floods uh, for our constituents. So it, it, like you said, it is a resolution. Um, it's not something we can fix in the state. If we could, we would. Um, but what we're doing is we're saying, hey, federal government, this is an issue. Please do what you can to fix it so that we don't have this happen again um, in a similar situation. You currently have a, a, a bill that's out uh, uh, to help, uh, and it's one of the SR6 recommendations, uh, to help provide tax credits uh, to volunteer first responders. We, we do have a crisis with our volunteer services and getting more people out there, and, and just wanted to ask you what you're seeing and in, in, in hearing in, in your neck of the woods. You know, our volunteer firefighters and first responders are amazing and they do great work in all of our communities and anything we can do to help support them. There's every year there's fewer and fewer uh, folks right. engaging and being involved in this. So what ends up happening typically with that is response times go up and and that's that's not necessarily a good thing. It's really a bad thing if you need the help. So what we're trying to do is say, hey, uh, there, there are things that you have to purchase um, in a rural community like ours. It's a volunteer, you know, system. Um, there are things that you're probably going to have to purchase that are you have to use your own money. And we, we're saying if you're using your own money to purchase gear that you need for the job to serve the community. Um, let's let's get you a tax credit for that and and be able to help support you that way. Well, we appreciate it. And, and like the previous things we've talked about, we look forward to working with you, Representative. Thank you for having an open door for PSATs and, and our members uh, uh, when we need to talk to you. And we very much look forward to working with you. Hey, thanks for having me. And if folks have any questions or comments at all on, on this package of legislation that someday will have a creative name, um, we'd, we'd love to, to have you reach out to your townships and, um, and any elected officials and tell them you support uh, the work that we're doing to try to bring about some meaningful change to, to being able to maintain our creeks and streams. Well, thank you again, Representative. Appreciate you taking the time to join us. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And remember, if you like what you're seeing, subscribe to PSAT's YouTube channel and follow our social media pages for more Township Video News content. Next Tuesday, look for your next episode of TVN.